Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brothers and sisters. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We always commence with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad, peace be upon him his household, his companions. May Allah bless them, bless us, bless every one of us and grant us goodness and forgiveness. Ameen. We're looking at supplications from revelation, the dua, when we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has kept within every single one of us needs. If he wanted, he could have created us without needs. We would have been independent, each one of us, but no. He wanted us to call out to him and that was part of our test. Who are we going to call out to? We call out to Allah and Allah alone. So he has mentioned so many supplications of the messengers of his, may peace be upon them all, in revelation. And it's important for us to go through these supplications. We learn a lot of lessons. The biggest lesson that we learn is they worshipped Allah in a beautiful way. Will we worship Allah in a similar way? So this evening we're going through Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam's du'as. A few more of some of these supplications made by one of the greatest of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest being Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam comes thereafter. He is among the top five. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about his du'as and supplications in many places in the Qur'an. I'm going to start off with a verse of Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَارْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ What a beautiful way of calling out to Allah. Allah is saying, remember when Ibrahim said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh my Rabb, let this town or this city or this place be a peaceful, secure place. Let this, here he is speaking of what became later known as Makkah al Mukarramah. Oh Allah, let this city be a beautiful city. You know, the term balad is used to refer to so many things. The town, the city, uh, sometimes even a village. They just call it balad, uh, depending. It's a, a, like a growth point. So let this place be aminan. Let it be a place that is safe. And he did not just make dua for its safety, but he says, وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ And grant its inhabitants uh, fruit, produce, Man amana minhum billahi wal yawmil akhir. Those who believe from amongst them in Allah and the last day. So this was the dua he made. He's making dua for peace, stability, security, and he's making dua for produce. So that sustenance. One hand, your relationship with Allah. The other hand, your relationship with the dunya, with this world. Because you have to earn and you want to eat. So let that produce come. And he says, for those who believe in Allah and the last day, but Allah's mercy is greater. When I look at this dua, I think to myself, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, over time we will see how his duas have evolved and become broader and broader. Here, this dua was very broad. He's making a dua for a certain city. Yes, they were his family members and progeny, but he did not know who would come in the future in that particular uh, place. Imagine as a result, even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born in Makkah al-Mukarramah. But Ibrahim alayhi salam says, Oh Allah, grant those who believe in you and in the last day. Allah says, hang on, I'm going to give even those who disbelieve. Subhanallah, amazing, amazing. We ask Allah, oh Allah, give me this. Allah says, I'm not only going to give you, I'm going to give your neighbor, your sister, your brother and everyone else as well. How about that? Subhanallah. Sometimes we say, oh Allah, give me a hundred pounds, a hundred dollars, a hundred rands. And Allah says, not just a hundred, I'll give you five hundred. And on top of that, I'll even give you a little bit of extra this and extra that. I'll throw it in. Subhanallah. That is the mercy of Allah. That is the greatness of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask for something, he gives you more than what you've asked for. Unlike us, humankind, when someone asks you for something, you're trying to look at how you can chop it up and how you can give them less than what they've asked you for. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all guidance and goodness. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, Allah says, قَالَ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا Allah says, even those who disbelieve, I'm going to give them provision for a while. I will give them provision for a while. So those who disbelieve, Allah says, I'm going to give them, I will give them. And evidence is across the globe, there are people who believe who have got, people who don't believe who also have. And sometimes it's vice versa in the sense that people don't have on either side of the, of, of the coin. It's all up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is a beautiful dua. How many of us make dua for our countries, for where we live, for our people, for the others? Oh Allah, let it be a peaceful city. Even if you're living in a non-Muslim country, we make dua for peace and goodness because that is how we will be able to grow. That is a time when growth will happen, when there is peace, stability, goodness. If you look at how Islam spread across the globe, mostly it's spread through business dealers who used to be upright, good Muslims, businessmen and women who used to be upright in a way that when they dealt with people, they were so impressed by the set of rules and regulations that were followed by these people that they started following them as well. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding and a very deep understanding. Let's look at another one of the verses where Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam calls out to, uh, to Allah for a few more things. Look what he says. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ He says, remember when Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam called out to Allah saying, O oh my Rabb, let this city be a peaceful city and protect myself and my son or my children from worshipping idols. Where did that come from? It was not random. The father of Ibrahim alayhi salam in a different place used to worship idols. So Ibrahim alayhi salam saw the detriment that there was in worshipping these idols. So he says, Oh Allah, I want this place to be aminan. I want it to be secure, to be peaceful and protect myself and my offspring from worshipping idols because worshipping idols would take away the inner peace, subhanallah. According to what we've learned and according to Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam's dua, he's asking for peace and the first component of peace is that you worship Allah alone. Amazing. Look at how the two are connected. So he would be saying, oh Allah, protect us from, uh, meaning grant us peace and let the enemy not come here. Instead of that, he says, grant us peace by firstly giving us the protection from worshipping idols ever again. Once he tasted the sweetness of worshipping the maker alone, there was nothing that needed explanation thereafter. In fact, Ibrahim alayhi salam never ever worshipped the idols because from the very beginning, he questioned his father. So this is why when, when they came all the way to Mecca, Remember, he was made to leave by his own people. So when he came to Makkah, he had a concern. What was the concern? You know, I might die, but I don't want my offspring to ever go back, to ever go back to what my father was in. Now, you and I know we have big plans for our children. We need to make dua for our children. We need to try with our children. But ultimately, Allah alone knows whether you will be alive to even see what's going to happen to your children. And you definitely will not be alive to see what's going to happen to your great-grandchildren and your progeny and offspring if Allah gives you any. So it's important to know that make a dua. Trust Allah. Leave it in the hands of Allah. When He takes you away, it's He who will make sure that what you wanted will be granted if it's been a part and parcel of the destiny that Allah has chosen for you and for them. May Allah make it easy. But our duty is to continue to make dua. So here comes a question. If everything was predestined by Allah, what was the point of Ibrahim alayhi salam or any one of us for that matter making a dua to Allah? How would it change things? Well, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that dua actually changes destiny. That the predestiny that Allah had chosen, dua to a certain extent has an effect and impact upon some of the details of that destiny. That was Allah's choice. Although ultimately Allah knew that you were going to make the dua and as a result of the dua, this is what was going to happen. That's one explanation. Another explanation is 
you and I don't know what, what's destined for us. So we're still in suspense. So because I don't know, I need to keep trying. I mean, when a person says, well, I don't know what Allah's destined for me, so I don't want to go to work. Well, that definitely now means that what was destined for you is that you don't go to work. So how are you going to earn when you haven't even utilized the energy that Allah has bestowed upon you to work? So because you don't know, go out and work. What you're going to get, Allah alone knows. But if you gave up before you even started uh, citing the issue of predestiny, then that was your foolishness. Someone asked me a question that, you know, uh, if Allah knows everything that's going to happen, why do we even have to do anything? I said, because you don't know. That's why. Allah knows, you don't know. So if you don't know, you have to keep on working towards it because Allah knows who's going to heaven and who's going to hell, right? You don't know, I don't know. So I'm going to keep on working towards going to heaven so that at least I increase my chances of going to heaven. Perhaps Allah may have written my name from amongst those going to heaven. But if I'm going to sit back and do whatever I want, claiming that as it is, Allah's written it, then who is to blame? I am to blame. So it's a very simple answer. Don't use the issue of predestiny to justify your sin, your misbehavior, and your disobedience, your distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's go back to the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. So he's, made, he's just made a dua for the city. You and I have seen what has happened to Makkah al-Mukarramah. It's a beautiful city. It's a safe city. Uh, it's been granted the produce by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, from all over the globe, even though things don't grow in Mecca besides maybe dates and one or two other things, but it has in it fresh produce from across the globe. Subhanallah, it was the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, the sincere prayer of someone who loved Allah, who dedicated his love for Allah, who sacrificed for Allah, who, for, who left that which... Uh, he had to leave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he called out to Allah, Allah granted him. So he's making a dua for the city and then he's making a dua for his children so that they may be protected from worshipping that besides Allah. Brothers and sisters, let's make a dua for our offspring. Let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always to protect our children from doing that which would displease Allah. But we need to start with ourselves, protecting ourselves from the disobedience of Allah together with the dua and the supplication. We need to make an effort and always ask Allah to protect you from haram. Always ask Allah to protect you from that which is sinful. Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haramik wa ghnini bi fadlika amman siwak. That was the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, let halal be sufficient enough for me. Let halal be enough for me to the degree that I am protected from haram. And O oh Allah, grant me independence through your virtue that I don't ever need to depend on anyone else, anyone besides you. That's a powerful dua. So you make that dua, Allah will grant you happiness and contentment through halal and he will keep you away from haram. But if you are not content with what is halal for you, you end up walking towards that which is haram and that is dangerous. So make dua for yourself, protect yourself, make dua for your children and have hope in the mercy of Allah. Then he says, he pauses for a moment to speak about the idols that he spoke about in the previous dua where he says, protect me and my offspring from the idols. He says, because these idols have led so many people astray. Many people he has seen, including his father, were led astray by the idols. Whoever follows me. And what I am saying, then consider him from me. He is from me and whoever disobeys me. Did he say he's not from me? No. He says, then, O oh Allah, you are most forgiving, most merciful. Subhanallah. Imagine how powerful this dua is. He's saying, O oh Allah, I am calling people towards worshipping you alone. 
Whoever worships you alone, he has followed my message. He's from me. You can consider him a part of me. Whoever doesn't, you are most forgiving. Now this was to do with his offspring as well. He's making a dua for his offspring. In the previous dua, he's making a dua for the city and the believers, even though they were all from his offspring, supposed to be, because they were the people of Mecca initially. Later on, Jurhum joined, etc. But Ismail السلام, married into Jurhum. He had offspring from them. Remember, Ibrahim is saying, Oh Allah, if they follow what I'm saying by worshipping you alone, then they are from me. And if they don't, you're most forgiving, most merciful. I pause here for a moment. We're talking about supplications from revelation. How would this have impacted upon our lives? We would never have imagined that such a powerful dua would show the closeness of a father to his children and his offspring to come, even those whom he doesn't know. It gives me, uh, you know, it brings to my mind something that has come to me from so many different parts of the globe where people complain, you know, I'm steadfast, but my son is suddenly left Islam, he's an atheist. Or uh, my, my child has turned away from Islam. Or my son doesn't want to read Salah. My daughter doesn't want to dress appropriately, etc. Uh, sometimes you go to a scholar and they'll tell you, cut relations, throw the person out, kick them out. That's it. You have nothing to do with them, etc., etc. But I'm a mother. I'm a father. I have a concern. So I can make a dua to Allah. Oh Allah, if they follow what I've said, Alhamdulillah, they are from me and my family. If they don't, you are most forgiving, most merciful. Guide them, have mercy on them. You know, فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Ghafur means forgiving. They may not seek forgiveness, but you are rahim as well. You are merciful. You can have mercy on them by making them seek that forgiveness. Because one might argue Allah will only forgive those who seek forgiveness. If they don't seek forgiveness, what's the point of you seeking forgiveness on their behalf? If they are remorseful, then when you seek forgiveness on their behalf, it will help. But if they're not remorseful, then don't bother wasting your time because you need to ask Allah to have mercy on them to begin with. Because through that mercy, Allah will guide them to turn back to Allah. So if you're living in a non-Muslim country, if you're living in a, an environment where uh, there is a lot of uh, pressure, so many things that are not absolutely according to the way you would like them, do you know what? People may uh, swerve, they may turn to the left, to the right. The fact that they get back onto the path and they continue further, even if it means towards the end of their lives, wallahi, it's the gift of Allah, it's the guidance of Allah. Yes, we need to understand that. Many of us have hopes and dreams for our children. They choose otherwise. Sometimes we have, nothing, we have no power over them. We won't have power over them beyond a certain point because the Almighty has kept them independent to a great degree. But we will make dua for them. Here is Ibrahim alayhi salam saying, Oh Allah, those who've turned away, you have two qualities that I have open. Number one is you are ghafoor. You're most forgiving. If they've sinned, forgive them. Number two, if they've turned away, completely have mercy on them by bringing them back to the path. وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Look at the power of this beautiful dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Uh, he's speaking about the idols. He knows the damage and the harm of these idols. And he's saying that, oh Allah, bring these people back, forgive them. And if they have uh, faltered, then you uh, guide them. Then the dua continues. Ibrahim alayhi salam was one who made lots and lots of dua. And we see the result of this beautiful dua in so many different ways today on the earth. This was the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Listen to what he says. Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyyati biwadin ghayri li zar'in inda baytikal muharram. ربنا ليقيم الصلاة فجعل أفئدة فجعل أفئدة من الناس تهوي إليهم وارزقهم من الثمرات لعلهم يشكرون. These are beautiful verses of Surah Ibrahim. He says, O oh Allah, O oh my Rabb, I have left some of my family. I have left, who did he leave? He left his wife Hajar alayhi salam and he left his son Ismail alayhi salam. He says, Oh Allah, I have left some of my family in this valley that has no 
growth of any form of greenery in it. It's barren completely. غير ذي زرع. Wad means the valley, and it has no greenery, no growth of plant, no plantation at all. I've left them in this valley, in in this valley, in the Baytik al Muharram, at your sacred house. So you told me to leave them. I left them. Why did I leave them? ليقيم الصلاة. In order for them to be able to establish the prayer. So I have left them there in order for them to establish the prayer. And I am going in order to establish your prayer by obeying your instruction to leave them and to continue. Even if he didn't understand. This was the uniqueness of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Even if he didn't understand exactly what Allah wanted to achieve. He followed it knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely uh, the Lord, He is the Maker, the Creator, and He will give. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, when this man made this dua, He called out to us, He left His family, He says, Oh Allah, I'm leaving them. I'm leaving them in order for them to be able to establish your worship here in the city. So I want you to do something for me, O oh Allah. What was this that Ibrahim alayhi salam wants Allah to do? He says, فَجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ I want you to make the hearts of all the people love and yearn towards them, towards that place, towards Mecca, in order for them to establish that salah and that ibadah, that act of worship that you prescribe. وَرْزُقُهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ And grant them from produce in order for them to be thankful. So when Allah gives you produce, it's in order for you to be thankful. But look at how powerful this is. I ask you, every one of you, isn't your heart with the Kaaba? Isn't your heart with Mecca? Wouldn't you like to go to Mecca? Well, the answer is yes in 100% of the cases. That is the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Here he's saying, Oh Allah, I'm obeying your instruction. I'm doing exactly what you want. Whether I understood it or not is a different point. What I want you to do for me, Oh Allah, is I just want you, who is the owner of the hearts of the rest of mankind, to put it in their hearts to want to come here. Subhanallah. You asked me to go to Mecca. Yes, I would. The Kaaba, yes indeed, maybe not greater Mecca, etc. Things have changed and so on. Perhaps there might not be anything else in, you know, in, in the whole peninsula. But Mecca, indeed. Medina, indeed. The Prophet Sallallahu resting place, indeed. And Mecca, absolutely. Who would not want to go there? It's amazing. It has this magnetic effect upon every Muslim. Why? It's the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So look at how powerful this dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is. And this is why, uh, in, inshallah, in our next episode, we want to see uh, the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam prior to him having uh, gotten Ismail alayhi salam and what he said as a result. He was always thankful to Allah. He always praised Allah. He was so thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved him so much. Thankfulness is a sign uh, of all the messengers of Allah. In the case of Nuh alayhi salam, Allah says, إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا He was definitely a slave of ours who was very, very grateful. Whatever we bestowed upon him, he was grateful. I want to end off by saying, my brothers, my sisters, think of the favors of Allah upon you. Think of all of the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. Learn to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, indeed, if we think of these favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, we will be able to... Uh, show gratitude to Allah. We'll be able to realize how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually given us. And that is when we will thank Him with the most beautiful of words. May Allah bless you all. I look forward to the next session, this beautiful episode that we have, inshallah, shall be continued. And I hope that you follow.